teacher, and friend to three generations of Dayton Pirates, you need to look a little closer into this town in the heart of wine country. Dewey Sullivan taught science for much of his school career and was fascinated with human nature. Even at the height of his success, he took the time to attend practices and clinics watching other successful coaches, such as Ad Rutschman and Tom Smythe. A Dayton player who made a mistake in a game would not necessarily be pulled out. Instead, Dewey wanted him to have the opportunity to make up for a mistake on his own, and more often than not, they did. And always, the endless reminders to players to tell your mom that you love her. Over the years, his practices evolved, becoming more fixated on execution than exertion. A long evening on the field meant a play wasn't being run to perfection so that it would become second nature during the game. The style of Dayton football remained familiar and simple, even boring to some observers. When the occasion warranted, the Pirates could march up and down the field with anybody. The epic 63-44 playoff victory over high-flying Regis in the 1996 state semifinal game proved the capabilities of Dewey's offensive philosophy. 42 years of encouragement and enthusiasm ended too soon. Dewey left us last fall following a scheduled surgery. The last time he was with his team, he told them he would be back in two weeks. The 2006 season became a celebration of his life and the community of Dayton still celebrates the spirit of Dewey Sullivan. Vera Sullivan, Dewey's wife, and the principal of the high school, Roger Lorenzen. Would you please come forward? Roger. Ooh. I'm right on over here and have a seat. Vera, why don't you sit right here, please? Roger, thank you. Well, Vera, this is, to say the least, quite an honor. Tell us, if you will, please, your life with Coach Dewey. It was great, just not long enough. Just, just, just. It was wonderful. It was just not long enough. It was, we just had a... He had a great life, we had a great life. And he enjoyed coaching, he enjoyed kids, he loved kids, yeah. and uh, I don't know what else I can say. Football, 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 <laughs> or teaching, teaching, teaching? <laughs> I think teaching, Yeah. teaching. Football is teaching. Sure. So, I don't know. Well, it's an honor to have Dewey in the or well, state of Oregon. Well, it's an honor for him to be inducted. Sports of fame, yes. Roger, uh, you played and coached. Oh, you have a microphone on. Uh, tell us your thoughts about Coach Sullivan. I would say teacher first. Um, he loved football. There's no doubt about that. But he loved the kids. He loved his family. Um, very humble man. Um, the coaches that used to get thrashed by him um, and the, their teams wouldn't probably think so. But they were, they were in awe of him a lot. But he was very, behind the scenes, very humble and very grateful for the successes he had. And he tried to learn from other coaches as well, correct? Absolutely. We were came, coming up here tonight, and uh, the school across the, from the Multnomah Club was practicing. Yeah. And I thought, there's no way he'd come in for happy hour if he could go out and watch for an hour and a half and then make it in the door at 7 o'clock. I love the one line that I had uh, in that piece just a moment ago that he always, the endless reminders to his players, tell your mom that you love her. That tells a lot about the man, Vera, when, when, right? When a, young man would call, when a young man would call and ask for a ride home, if he didn't end with that, Dewey would have him call him back and say, tell your mom you love her. 
<laughs> that was stocked with him because family and love was very important. So. Roger, 42 years in the business of teaching and coaching football, a community of Dayton. Now, you have a, a great uh, group from Dayton back there, do you not? Dayton folks, stand up. That's Snap, and we have all kinds of Dayton people out there. Right. Oh, they're all over. Oh, they're my goodness. Look at that. They're everywhere. Uh, I would imagine there are endless stories. What was it like on a home game in Dayton? Well, actually, we people kind of got uh, bored with winning. <laughs> <laughs> there were times where you'd walk out on the field for um, a playoff game, the first round or two, and the stands would be maybe half full. Mm -hmm. And then by the time they rolled around, People started coming out. We'd, go ahead. We'll wait until the championship, but sometimes you don't make the championship. Yeah. And it was <laughs> That's right. What was it like to be a, a player for Dewey? It's a very honored to be a player. Um, I grew up with Brent and Brenda. They were my classmates. I knew Barry and Candy as um, students are ahead of me, the children. Um, Probably the best view I had of Dewey was working with him as an assistant coach for nine years and yeah. then as his principal. Um, when he took ill in the 90s, he asked me to be with him in the booth, and that's where the story came about. The, the young man who kind of made a mistake before half, and yeah. he decided, let's keep him in. Everything about coaching said, take him out, you know, let's go to the prevent. And he was a, tight, a defensive end. He said, leave him in. And I asked him on the way down. We were in Austin Stadium. We rode down the cart to halftime. I said, why didn't you pull him out? He said, if you were that kid, would you want to come out knowing that you caused a, another set of downs for our opponent? Mm -hmm. um, he's unlikely to make that mistake again. The kid actually ended up sacking the quarterback to end the half. So that's why he was a legend. <laughs> that's why he's a legend. Also, when uh, yes, sir. the state championship in 2002, our first series, I think we fumbled the ball. And uh, so Amity got the ball back yeah. and uh, proceeded. We ended up pushing them back, and we got the ball back again. And then uh, they said, well, what, re what play are we going to run? And Dewey said, we'll run the same play again. What? We just, no, we'll run the same play again. And I think they scored on it or the next one after that. <laughs> Vera, what was game day like for you or the weekend of the getting ready for a game? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you were you were not about Dewey was out doing his thing, right? No, he he was nervous. He was always nervous, but <laughs> he enjoyed practices much more than he ever enjoyed the games. He liked working with the kids and everything. Right. It was more hands on. In the game it was kind of out of his control. He hoped they were prepared for it. He tried to prepare them. And um, I, he he loved practices. And he achieved so many goals that he set for himself, did he not? I think he achieved most of his goals. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's just a pleasure. He, uh, there's, you talk about legends in, in this state. Dewey Sullivan is a legend. And Vera, that's going to make you feel so proud, it, it right? It does. This is an honor. This is an honor. It does. And I do want to thank my son-in-law, Jeff Bornack, for nominating Dewey for this. And I also want to congratulate all the inductees tonight. And I thank everyone who played for Dewey or coached with him or just knew him and loved him. I thank them for coming. Do you have any final thoughts, uh, Roger? I do. I, uh, one of the greatest honors I ever had was to bring Vera out of the stands to coach five times at state title games. Um, and for the coaches' wives who are in the, in the audience, Coach would... Um, he would like that he would say thank you for the time that you put in as a, a spouse supporting not only the coach but the kids that come with the coach. Um, and likewise, if you're a, a woman and you coach, their husband puts in a lot of time. And so I would say this is the stand by your man type of woman. <laughs> and uh, that's all I can say. I love her uh, dearly. Uh, well, it's time. It's time, dear. Just stand here with A real, Rogers, stand in here too. A real deserving honor, there is no question about that. Ladies and gentlemen, officially nominated and sealed.
in the State of Oregon Sports Hall of Fame, Coach Dewey Sullivan. Over the years, Oregon football has produced many outstanding athletes and individuals. Our next inductee helped set the standard for what a University of Oregon star football player had to have. A true Iron Man in the history of Oregon duck football. Jim Shanley set a standard for excellence and compiled records that have lasted for 50 years. He was a two-way stalwart on Len Casanova's breakthrough teams of the mid-50s for three years, playing nearly every play of every game at halfback and defensive back. Shanley was named all Pacific Coast Conference every year, reset the school career rushing record, with 1,887 yards gained and scored 24 touchdowns. The final touchdown of his duck career was Oregon's only score in the tightly contested 1958 Rose Bowl game with Ohio State. Jim hit the ground running in his first year in Eugene. In 1955, he carried the ball for 711 yards, 10th best in the nation, and he led the Ducks in receiving. Shanley was Oregon's most valuable player in his senior year and co-captain of the Rose Bowl participants. He won several All-America honors that year as well. His rushing, scoring, and 3,000 plus all-purpose yards still hold up in UO's all-time top tens in various categories. True to the grinded out nature of Len Casanova's offenses of the era, Shanley racked up all those yards without ever achieving a 100 yard game. Jim's prowess at returning punts earned him a spot in the NFL with the Green Bay Packers. He stayed in the game after his retirement as a player, coaching with the legendary Jim Sweeney at Washington State. A constant on the field as a player, a consistent achiever, Jim Shanley is Oregon's Iron Man of Record. Jim Shanley. Hello, Jim. Have a seat, sir. Okay. A true Iron Man in the history of Oregon Duck football. And not, I guess there's nobody that plays both ways anymore, are there? That I know of. I don't think so. You know, two platoon football now is uh, here to stay, I'm sure. Uh, what prompted that at the time, you played both ways? Well, I think it was all about money back in those days. Ooh. You know, <laughs> we had a squad of about 45 people. Yeah. And the squads today with uh, two platoons are yeah, probably yeah. special least, teams and all that. You never had that. Yeah, they're approaching 100. Yeah. You strapped it on, you played both ways. Yeah. What was it like in the Rose Bowl at the time when you were there? Well, um, that's 50 years ago. That's, I understand. Uh, <laughs> I have a tough time remembering yeah. you. Do the best you can. Uh, but, well, you know, it is an event every, obviously, every January 1st that uh, it comes back to mind yeah. a great deal. Right. And uh, you think about the what ifs. It was a great game, maybe the best bowl game of the season that year. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, there's just a lot of great memories about it. You know, full stadium, uh, playing the national champions, and coming within that close of uh, winning it all was uh, it was quite an honor. Uh, I said in that little piece there the uh, grinded out nature of Len Casanova's offenses of the era. What was that like? Well, in those days, uh, you ran the football. You didn't throw it too much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think in the Rose Bowl, we, well, we threw it uh, 15 times, something yeah. like that. And that right. was a lot. And it set a Rose Bowl record. Uh, Jack had a great game. Ron Snover uh, set a Rose Bowl record uh, in receptions. And uh, But that probably was the most we'd ever thrown it that year. Wow. His rushing, he's uh, scoring 3,000 plus all purpose yards, and that still holds up. Wow, pretty good. Well, you know, when you look at uh, some of the players today, they uh, like the 18, <coughs> 1,887 yards of total rushing or total, total yards uh, for three years, some of the players are doing that every year. So the specialization in football today yeah. has really improved the game. The Iron Man, what does that do to you when they say Iron Man Jim Shanley? <laughs> You're the first guy I've heard say that. I don't know. <laughs> That's what it says here. No, no. You were. You played both ways. Played both well, ways. Good. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it, uh, obviously when you're playing both ways, you, got, uh, you don't have the energy to... Uh, go in there and have 12 guys trying to get part of the tackle, you might, uh, when you see it being, uh, back in those days, you see somebody making the tackle, you didn't go in and pile on, you yeah. kind of rested. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the final touchdown of your uh, duck career was Oregon's only score in that 1958 Rose Bowl game. Can you remember that one? Yeah, I remember it well. Take us through that. Score the, score the touchdown. Well, uh, you know, it was just a basic option play that we uh, ran. Uh, uh, Jack Crabtree, our quarterback, who was the outstanding player of the game that, uh, that game, mm -hmm. uh, came down the line, faked inside to Morris, and uh, pulled it out and decided to, whether he was going to run or pitch, and yeah. pitched. And we were, Charlie Turbo was out as a, the uh, flanker back, and he did a great job screening the, the corner off from uh, coming up. And so it wasn't that difficult of a, <laughs> of a score. It was, I mean, it was well blocked, <laughs> well, well played. What do you think of football today, Jim? I think that it's fantastic what they're doing today. I, uh, when I saw the University of Oregon play uh, Michigan, Mm -hmm. and play so well, I, uh, I, I said that night, and, and then the next week we had an opportunity to have a Rose Bowl reunion where we were, the Rose Bowl team was back on campus, and uh, mm -hmm. Mike Bellotti invited us in to meet the team, really? which I was very impressed with that group of young men, by the way. But I, I told them, and I, and I really meant this, that I think that that game... <laughs> They were the best-looking Oregon team that I had ever seen. And right. they could run the ball, and they could throw the ball, and they, they, they did it all. So that was, that was good. Well, in your day, you did it all. And you're an icon. There is no doubt about it in the legend of University of Oregon football. And it's a delight to uh, officially indoctrinate you into the State of Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. I'm going to do that right now. Jim Shanley, University of Oregon, the Iron Man. You are officially into the State of Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Stay right here for a moment. Would all the uh, award winners tonight come up on stage, please? All of you. The award winners tonight come up, please. Mary, are you coming? Yeah, there's Mary. All right. 
All the award winners, please. Yeah, would you help Vera up, please? That's good, yeah. Where's your, where, go ahead. He dropped it. Come on, Vera, come right in here. That's fine. Atta girl. That's fine. There you have it, my friends, the 2007 Clash of the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Another big thank you to the folks at Les Schwab Tires, Standard TV and Appliance, Nike, for their assistance in making tonight happen. When you're looking for that perfect place for your next group event, be sure to visit the Sports Hall of Fame downtown. Give them a call and set up a group function or bring the family and friends through. They're downtown at 3rd and Salmon. It's a walk through time that you soon won't forget. Thank you to our crew, everybody here at the Mac Club, the folks from Comcast and everybody else connected. We thank you very, very much. That concludes our tonight's induction ceremony. Thank you all for coming. And remember, you've got to make your free throws. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.